Hello, welcome to another video. Today, I'm looking at the Hyphen-X 100 watt USB-C power adapter. It does have an Intertech US and Canada safety listing and a UL Japan safety listing. We can see the Dongguang Rui Hang Electronic Co. LTD manufacturer there, but Hyphen-X is the brand that we're actually gonna see on the product. So let's open it up and take a look. Plastic tray. There's the user manual, it says hello. Hello, the giant H for extra emphasis. Hyphen X 100 watt four port GAN wall charger user guide. Fairly basic in this one, so that's good. So they tell you which port can do which thing. That's actually really nice when you have a multi-port device like this. So they tell you you can get 100 watts on one port or you can mix and match in various ways. Barcode if you wanna try and search for this thing. And then we do get the overall specifications here. So there's the actual model, the RHPD100W. So let's take a look at the device itself. It's got a nice logo on the side here. You can see on the side we have our usual. So we, we do have some nice safety listings there. That's good. Overall, this is a much heavier device than the previous things I've reviewed. So let's get the scale out and take a look. The packaging for this device weighs 31 grams. The power adapter in this case weighs 198 grams. So here's a look at those USB ports. You can see the USB 1, 2, C, and then the A 1 and 2. The price on this one was about $53, so it's also not the cheapest adapter out there. Plugged in is a very dim blue LED that glows on there. I wonder if that'll get brighter when we actually plug something in. So right off the bat, we're seeing something a little different with this adapter, and that's that it's got a very high idle power consumption. So this power adapter seems to kind of go through a cycle where it draws more power and then it draws a little less power. So it's kind of got a keep awake cycle. It knows nothing's plugged in. So you can see the power is dropping down a little bit here, but then it goes up to over 0.4 watts. So for a short period of time, it decreases and then it kind of, so it's kind of going over a cycle. So the overall average power consumption over a longer period of time ends up being about 0.3 watts on this unit. Let's plug it in and see how it works. So we're plugged into our decoy board here. We can check the different modes of operation. So we have five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, and 20 volts. So just as specified in the user manual, it can do all these different modes. Well, there's the surprise. The total harmonic distortion is very low. So although the power consumption on this unit is on the higher side, the THD on this unit is on the very low side, even at idle. So let's check out what happens. I've seen this before where once you start to load the device down, the THD shoots up. So we'll connect it up here and I'm gonna put a 10 watt load on with the five volt mode. So the THD did come up a little bit. We're about 35% now. So something very interesting has happened when we're in this 10 watt load. The power factor has increased to 0.84. So that tells us something about what's inside this unit that's not even advertised on the box. I'm gonna go ahead and take the power a little higher. Let's see if it can change modes while it's on. So yes, it can. I'm gonna take it right up to the 20 volt mode and let's take it up to 50 watts. So yeah, very interesting. So now we can see we have our 500 milliamps current coming in. We have a power factor of almost one, which is awesome. And our peak current is only 850 milliamps, 15 milliamps, which is great. So this thing is active power factor correcting the signal that's coming in. So the AC wave that's coming in is being corrected so that your current and voltage waveforms are the same shape and the line up with each other. You can check out my video on power quality for why this matters and what it means. Uh, but right now, what you need to know is that this active power factor corrected hyphen X device is doing something no other power adapter that I have seen does. So that part gets a thumbs up. So now I'm going to try and take this up to 65 watts and let's see what happens. So you notice that it turned off and there's a reason for that. This cable is not rated for 5 amps and the 20 volt mode. So this cable can only do 60 watts. So it's a very high quality cable but it doesn't have something that's required to do 100 watt USB-C. And that is a little chip that's located inside the end of one of these. And that lets the power adapter know that it can go up to the full 100 watts and the cable itself is actually capable of handling the 100 watts. So this is a 100 watt capable cable. Let's go ahead and get that plugged in. And there it is, doing 65 watts on the output, no problem. All right, let's take this thing up to overload and see what it can do. I'm gonna take it right up to 90 watts. It's doing that no problem. Let's take it up to 95 watts, 100 watts. Uh-oh, we got an overload. But it's not the fault of this. It's because I'm on a too low of a current range over here. So I need to change this over to the 30 amp range. And now we should be good to go at 100 watts. 
All right, so now we're at 100 watts. You can see the amps are a little over five here to maintain that 100 watts. And that's because of voltage drop in this cable. This cable, I haven't evaluated too carefully yet, but I've determined that this is the best cable that I own that has the 100 watt marker in it. And I'm gonna do a review of some of these cables coming up in a future video. Uh, if you wanna see some more of that, let me know. So let's take this thing to overload. 100 watts, 101 watts, 102 watts, 103 watts, 104 watts, 105 watts, and it's off. So you turn it off, it recovers to the five volts so you don't have to unplug it again. Uh, so yeah, that's a nice safe, that's a safe overload level. So at 104 watts, it'll run. 105 watts, it trips out the overcurrent. That's, that's great. That's exactly what should happen. Overall, when we take a look at the numbers for this unit, we see something a little different. The numbers are going up into the 170s for the power quality. That's because of the active power factor correction that's in this device. So because it's pushing those power factor numbers closer to one, which is what we want to see, it's also pulling down the THD numbers at the same time. And both of those things are improving our power quality. The one thing that's a drawback to this unit is we can see that idle power at about 0.3 watts and the idle VA in is about 2.88. So it's got some strengths and it's got some weaknesses, but when you're actually using this thing, the power that it transfers to your device is going to be fairly high and you're going to get very high power quality. So it's not gonna waste a lot of current while you're using it. The best scenario for something like this is to unplug it. Use it and then unplug it. Don't leave it plugged in all the time. Or if you're using it for a laptop or a computer monitor, it's gonna be in that mode where it's in the power factor correction range almost all the time. So therefore it's good to use for that as well. So I'm gonna change up the way I compare this to other devices. Because this device is so much different, I'm gonna group those devices together. So we're gonna have an average value and then I'm going to start putting these larger adapters into a table. So right now we only have two entries in the table. Just for completeness, I'm gonna add in a third one here. What we can see when we look at this is there's basically no comparison. The power factor corrected device just beats the pants off of the other power adapters. When we take a look at this on a graph, we can see that the idle power consumption is much higher. So that's a weak point of this adapter. The power quality of that weakness is a little bit better. So as it, as it looks right now, it's a little bit of a win and it's also a little bit of a lose on the idle condition. When we look at it under the load condition though, you can see that this thing just blows everything out of the water. This is the hands down winner with no question. And it's got the safety listing, so that's a good win too. So the graphical data for this, you know, you can say it's a mix. So overall, this hyphen X power adapter gets a, gets a thumbs up. And if you're using this for your laptop, you can also charge your phone at the same time. So you can use this adapter, power your laptop, and also charge your phone with a higher power quality at the same time. And therefore, you'll actually be saving energy in the long run because the device will be operating in that mode where the power factor correction is engaged. So as long as you're using a little bit of power from this thing all the time, it's very good. So if you have something like a, a smaller device and a laptop, this is a great device to use for charging multiple things at the same time. So overall, this device gets a recommendation from me. I like it. It's about $53, so I'd say it's a little more on the expensive side, but you're also getting a lot more functionality and a lot more features. Here's a preview of the upcoming device. We're gonna be doing this Google 30 watt USB-C charger. So we're gonna uh, take a look at this next week. So that's it. That's the, the summary of the review of the hyphen X power adapter. If you liked it, let me know. And let me know what you wanna see next. Thanks for watching. Bye.